breaks off for just because there's always distractions if we, if we don't do that. So I will do that as well. I'll also check the chat box. And so if there are things coming in the chat that um, I think need to get communicated, we'll again, go ahead and do that. So okay. thanks awesome. everyone. It's your turn, We're, you're on. <laughs> Yay, okay. <laughs> so good afternoon, everybody. It's nice to see some familiar faces. Um, so like she said, my name is Jessica Andrea Capasantiago. I'm just gonna tell you a little bit of my background. Um, my bachelor's degree is in English, linguistics specifically, with a teaching certification. My master's degree is in English education and a TESOL certification. Both of the degrees are from Puerto Rico, so my homeland, which is nice and warm right now. Um, and once I've been here in Rhode Island for almost two years, like a year and 10 months, but who's counting? Um, what I'm gonna be doing today is just showing you what has been working for me so far. Since I've only been here for almost two years, I've been able to work with Progreso Latino, and now I'm fully at Genesis Center as a facilitator. Now, before I start, I have two little questions for you. Um, I want you to press Y for yes, if you have tried using WhatsApp with your class or are currently using it, just to see what kind of audience I have today. Okay, no, yes, no, okay. Awesome. Now, great. So I'm gonna have a second question for you, which regards almost the same thing. Now, for those of you that have used WhatsApp or are currently using it, just write yes or no if it has worked for you or it's currently working for you. Awesome. I see so many yeses. Awesome. Okay, great. So I'm gonna turn off my camera and I'm gonna start sharing the screen. If you have questions about a particular example, feel free to let me know. At the end, I will be having a Q&A session for everything in general, but if I'm explaining an example and you're kind of, you want more information about it, just feel free to ask, okay? Awesome. So we're going to start sharing in a second. Okay, great. I hope everybody sees this. And let's start off. So today I'm going to be talking to all of you about using WhatsApp as an easy access tool for distance learning. What will we cover today? What, we'll, what I will be covering today is its use for what I use it with my students and how I use it, that's where I'm gonna give you all the examples. I'm going to talk to you about it's easy access. Why is it easy? Why do I keep saying it's very tech friendly? It's effectiveness for distance learning, how I've known, noticed that it does work with my students and the reason why I think that teachers should try it, those of you that haven't tried it or those of you that have tried it and think it doesn't work good with them, so I'm going to be talking to you about that. And most importantly, I think the cons, not everything is picture perfect, unfortunately, but it is very important to know the cons when it comes to getting a head start in something. What can it be used for? Now, the reason why I use this, I use it, well, what's up in general can be used for creating big groups, in our case, classes, big group classes. You can use WhatsApp for phone calls. WhatsApp can be used for video calls, for instant, te instant texting and audio messages, pictures, and videos. Now, this is just general. What can WhatsApp be used, either for class or outside of class? Now, this is how I use it. So I use it first to send my students material 
And when I send the students materials, I send it everything through WhatsApp. We don't have any other platform. We only use WhatsApp. I also stay in contact with the students whenever a student is sick or doesn't feel like he can or she can't join the class. She will let me know through WhatsApp. I do small video calls with my students where we have face-to-face -face time once a week and differentiation among students. Now, this is the fascinating thing about distance learning because differentiation in the classroom can be a big deal, but when you're trying to do it from home, you have students that as soon as I send the material, they can privately text me at the same time, teacher, I do not understand this. Can you please let me know? Or I can just explain it and they feel better in the sense that nobody else has to know I'm asking too many questions or I do not understand. Now, you can also take pictures through WhatsApp. And I have my students take pictures of their work through WhatsApp and send it to me. Okay, now here I'm jumping more into the examples. On the right, you can see a screenshot of my English morning class. I currently teach two level two English classes, one in the morning, one in the PM. And I teach um, English slash workforce content class, which is in the afternoon also. So in the right, you will see a screenshot for my English two morning class where every day I greet them and you can see my message, which is, which is the one in the green bubble where I say what they're gonna do and you can see all the students replying. Now to the left, you can see a screenshot of the work that I send them, something very simple. I send them two different ones. In this case, I only have one there. And you can see that I send that material, the students reply right away and they have the picture of the work. You can even see how one student says, teacher, I love when you sending this homework. So to the left, you see the picture. The students have their time to read it, do it on their, on their notebook or their binder because we have like a class portfolio. And when they finish, this is what they sent me. They sent me a picture of the questions with the answers. So you can see that on the left a question with the answers and the date. I grade it, I correct it. I make, if I see they keep having problems with a certain question, I go back and tell them to, to check it. If they have doubts on something or whatnot, that's where the back and forth go in private. Now, students have the chance to either send me their work in the group chat or privately. Even though they sent me the group, the work in the group chat, I always correct it and send it to them privately. Because not a lot of students, not every student like sharing how they are doing in class, if they did good or they did bad or are they having problems with certain things. So I still keep that privacy just like when we're correcting in the classroom. Now here, I'm going to show you an example of a video. Now, this is a very short video. It's maybe like a minute and a half. I hope if you can't hear it when I hit play, please let me know so I can make sure I'm doing everything correctly through, oh, through my side. I'm going to. Good morning. So the first thing I want to say is Thank you for returning to class. Thank you for completing your assignment yesterday. And I do want to remember, well, remind you, I do want to remind you that you have until 11.30 to send me your assignments for me to correct them. If you send them right at 11.30 or after 11.30, you won't get your assignments corrected until the next day. Just Okay, 
so the second thing in agenda is to just go over the questions that you had or some of you had doubts about the USA Learns account. I already sent you a picture of the students that are enrolled in the class. So we have 14 students out of 20, which is very good. If you are not on the list that I send you, that means that you are not um, connected to our class. So I'm just going to send you, not send you, show you here since you're doing it from a phone, how you're supposed to log in and what you can do. Now, if you already have an account, just make sure you are in the class. If you don't know how to make an account. Okay, so that was just a little gist of a screen recording that I did for a class, for my morning class. As you can see, I mentioned at the beginning that our class is from 9 to 11.30, and if they send me any material to correct after 11.30, I will not correct it for them until the next day. Now, that's where I go in with ground rules well, I'll, that I will be explaining a little bit further in the presentation, but that's only the second day of class. If you notice, I think it was May, March 17th, and we had started March 16th online classes. And remember, it's something that we didn't plan for. It was just something that we had to jumpstart and see what worked. So it was March 17th, the day before I had them create an account all by themselves. And 14 out of 20 students had already successfully done it with just my explanation through videos. The, those students that had not been able to do it I sent them this particular video explaining how to log in through their phone. Okay. Now, another thing is that we do dictations and sometimes when we use the book, the book requires some listening activities. And that's when the audio option from WhatsApp comes very handy. So all I do is record myself when I, where they're gonna get ready for the dictations. I will repeat the words at least twice if it's for vocabulary, just to make sure they can hear it again. And if it's class material, I'll just play it once and they can go back and listen to it whenever. That's one of the perks of distance learning, right? Because sometimes in the classroom, you can only repeat so much and you have to keep moving on. But here, if they need to just do the listening, just to get used to the pronunciation of certain words, they can go back and practice, go back and practice. So I'm only gonna play just one word so you can get a gist of how the audio quality is, I guess. Inference. Inference. So there we had, I think it was 10 vocabulary words that we use and each word I repeated them twice and send it to them and then they can just replay it how many times they wish. So I have a I have a quick question about yeah. the audio. Yeah. So you send them recorded samples. So you'll record it if it's just practice for listening and their own speaking, and then dictation is not recorded. That's like a sort of more of like an assessment. No, I do the dictation vocabulary words. I do record them and send it to them. Oh, okay, so they can practice listening as much as possible before the real time dictation. Yeah. Like exactly. Okay, cool. Because that's a good question. Because I do send them a list of the vocabulary and I'm like, hey, practice this. We have vocabulary Friday. But yet again, let's keep in mind it's not their first language. So they're probably reading it not how it's supposed to be pronounced. And they're then if I explain it, then when it comes to the dictation, if I just give the word, they're gonna be just eye rolling like what is she talking about which one is that one because sometimes 
just the word example, you think example, and then you have students that say example, example. So if I just give them the word example without the pronunciation, and when the day of the dictation comes in, I say examples, they're going to keep thinking and thinking. So just to avoid that and that they get their whole, they get just used to the pronunciation also in the listening aspect. Okay. So, yes, moving on. We have the video call. Now, WhatsApp allows for video calls for a max of eight. So I like doing small groups for video calls. And the way I do it is using time slots. So to the right, you can see a small example, an example of the time slots that I use. I have three students per time slot. The whole idea of creating the time slots was that I did not want to deal with students not answering the phone or not coming into the call or just having all these excuses that they couldn't attend or they were busy. That way they already know, okay, the teacher is going to call me. My time, my time slot is time slot two. So the teacher is definitely going to call me at 10 a.m. I have to be ready for the dictation or for the checkup or for the conversations. Now, the ways that I use the video calls are just like I mentioned, a checkup on students. So it's just very randomly, very just going with the flow, asking students questions. How is everything at home with the COVID situation? Do you miss class? So it's just regular checkup. Then the other way I use it is having conversations. The day before I will send them material, just like dialogues, and they will be practicing them at home. And when they have their time slot, then they will have that dialogue with the other classmates there. And finally, the dictation. Like I already mentioned, I send them the vocabulary and I send them the audio. And then the video call is just to have them write it. I'm going to show you some pictures of this. Here's a picture of me and my students where they're all smiling. It was our first call after the whole situation of COVID. It was our first call. We were just there just talking and checking up on each other. It wasn't anything practice. It was very natural. Then this one is with the dictations. As you can see, they're very concentrated and so am I. Um, I'm just there saying the words, repeating the words, and they're writing it. Now, okay, so we're doing dictations from home. How do I grade it? How do I know they're not copying from a paper or this or this or that? Um, they actually, as soon as I hang up the call, they send me a picture of their grade, of their dictation. And right away, I just grade it and send it back to them. Here's an example of one of the dictations. Now, the cool thing with WhatsApp is that you can correct, right? Well, it has features that you can add emojis or numbers or words in a picture. So I use that feature feature for my advantage when it comes to correcting. So I don't have to save the picture on my phone to get it out to start correcting. What I do is that I just use the same picture they sent me and correct it there and send it back. Here's another one. So that's when I know a student's taking too long to take a picture and send it to me right after the dictation. That's kind of iffy. Somebody unmuted. Anybody has a question? I do, Yaxica. It's Larry. Yes, um, yes Larry. Is that, um, is that ability to annotate on documents, is that standard with um, WhatsApp or is that an extension? No, good question. It's already in the features of WhatsApp. It's oh already there. Yes. Where? When, you, okay, so I'm going to talk a little bit later about using it in a computer and in the phone. Okay. But this is in the phone. I'll wait. Okay. Thank you for your patience. Thanks. <laughs> okay. So, yes. So, that's a good 
um, clarification, I'm just going to make that notice now. I'm going to talk a little bit more later, but you can use WhatsApp in your on your phone and in your computer. But if you want to use all the features, it's better on the phone. Mm -hmm. So if you want to grade or if you want to send audio, it's better through the phone because let's keep in mind it is an app. Now you can still use the desktop version for other things that I'll talk a little bit later. Yeah. Um, yes. Uh, I think you you also can export from your all the students' work from WhatsApp to your Google Classroom because I, I do the same thing. So I, I, you can do that. You can export from from whatever activity students are doing from your from from your WhatsApp to your Google Classroom too. You can, oh, you can do that. Yeah. That's awesome. I know that I can export anything to yeah. my phone or to my computer. Mm -hmm. But I haven't used Google Classroom with these students particularly. But thank yeah. you for the information. Yeah. OK. Anybody else have a question with this particular feature? Um, not yeah. about the feature necessarily. I, I'm mm -hmm. going to play with it and figure out how to do it because it was one of my questions, like, how do you grade like this? I'm glad you're showing a picture of it. Um, but I also want to hear more about exporting from uh, WhatsApp into Google Classroom. I don't want to take the time from this web webinar, but maybe Joan, we could figure out how to touch base on, on that. Or that's something I'd be interested in seeing from a Rhode Island teacher to other Rhode Island teachers in the future. Because that sounds good. Okay, sounds awesome. Um, because the way, like I said, I haven't used Google Classrooms with it, but I do. I do know how to just download it because it's very easy to just download it and then export it to another um, platform. So, so like I said, that's another example. Now, I already gave you the examples and I'm going to move on to how is it an easy access tool? Because that's the whole title of this webinar, right? Like it's an easy access tool for distance learning. Now, the main reason is that, like I mentioned at the beginning, I'm from Puerto Rico. We use this a lot over there, just um, WhatsApp. And most of our ESOL students use it to communicate with family back home. Either it's Haiti, Dominican Republic, Cuba, Colombia, Paraguay, wherever they are from, they ha most of our students already have that knowledge of how you use WhatsApp. Why? Because it's free, it's it's free of cost, and you only need Wi-Fi to do any of the features that I already mentioned. So it's easier for them that when you move from your country to the States to communicate back home instead of paying a lot of fees for a distance long, long distance on call, you can just download it to your phone. And as long as you have Wi-Fi, you can communicate to any part of the world. So I already knew that. So I took advantage of that and having experienced that with my own family. So that's also good. Um, the second thing is that you can download it to any smartphone, either it's an Android or an Apple, and it works the same. Because that's something that's very important because sometimes you download an app to an Android and it doesn't work the same as it does to an Apple or mm -hmm. vice versa. Yep. And here, WhatsApp works exactly the same, okay? It has the same features for an Android and for an Apple. It has all the things you can do with one smartphone, you can do it with the other. Now, this is where Larry was asking about the computer. Yes, you can also use WhatsApp through the computer, through a desktop, but it doesn't have the feature of grading. You can add emojis i believe but not grading when you use the feature through the computer it's easier for sending documents for sending links for sending pictures and for downloading the material like one of the other teachers was mentioning you can export so when if you're working with the platform of google classroom it's easier to use whatsapp through the computer 
to download and export all of that information from one platform to another. But when it comes to using the features of grading and editing, it's easier through the phone and the video calls. The video calls don't work through WhatsApp desktop. They work through WhatsApp, the app on your phone, not on your desktop. So I think that's very important to mention also because I have tried doing a call, a video call through the desktop and I noticed that it wasn't working. I had to go back to my phone. Also, all the pictures that you receive from the students, like all those gradings that you have to do, the pictures that you sent back to them, the class material, they don't necessarily have to get saved on your, like in your phone. You know, you don't want to have your phone gallery full with student papers that you're grading and then just getting all your space. That's also something that WhatsApp allows you. You can just go to the settings and put that you do not want to save any of the WhatsApp pictures to your phone and they just stay in WhatsApp and that's it. You don't have to have them in your phone gallery at all which since I'm using this for class, it's something very good for me because I do not want to have all those dictations on my phone, okay? Now, how is it effective? How can, how, how am I so sure that it's effective? Well, the first thing is it's instant. So just like text messaging through your phone normally, as soon as they send it, a text or as soon as I send a text, they receive it at the moment. It doesn't get delayed or anything. The other thing, constant communication back and forth. You can have communication with students either in the group or like I mentioned for differentiation, you can have it separately for any students that have certain amount of questions and you don't want to just load all those answers into the group chat you can always talk to them separately it can be used from the phone and the computer like i already mentioned it it doesn't need much data or space on the phone so that's one of the reasons why i didn't have students download zoom or even google meets or stuff like that because they already had whatsapp and then some of them don't have uh, the newest phone out there. They don't have an Apple. They don't have the best Android. So I didn't want them to feel that anxiety that they had to keep on downloading more things to be able to stay in class. It's also an on the go. I mean, I had students do video calls with me while doing, while driving to drop off something. They've said, teacher, I'm going to be at the laundromat. Can I answer you while I wait for my clothes to dry? <laughs> so it has <laughs> happened. It's on the go. I mean, if they still want to participate in class, even while doing their laundry, I'm fine as, as long as I don't see anything unnecessary. Um, so it's on the go. It doesn't require a tech expert to fully understand. Now, this was honestly my main concern with this whole situation happened. Oh, we have to jumpstart long um, distance learning. My student range is from 26 year olds all the way to 78 year olds. There's a big gap right there. The students that are in their 20s, 30s, 40s, they can be more tech savvy and they could download and upload and this and that. But then those students are like, late 50s 60s 70s it's hard for them and honestly i wasn't thinking about oh this is the best app ever i was thinking like oh this is something most of my students have this is something i know they can use now how can i make it work into a class that was honestly my first thought when i was thinking about this whole situation and, um, uh -huh. yes, I would like to add something. If yes, I think Duo that Google dot com is easier is on the phone, and also if we have a Chromebook, you can download easily, and they can use it. I, mean, I have some students who are seventy five, 
uh, 55, 65, so they are not tech savvy. So I use Duo. That Duo. Would, yes, it's very clear, easier. It, might be easy, it would be easier for the students at that level or at that age to use Duo instead of oh. WhatsApp or something like that. Oh, thank you. I did not know about that app. Yeah. And also you can form groups like group of eight or 10 or 12, maximum 12 students. And also you can do it individually. So it's easier for I mean, than, than using WhatsApp for those kind of students um, because of their age. And yes, duo.google.com. Okay, duo.google.com. Okay. Uh -huh. Awesome. Thank you. I'll definitely check that out. Exactly. So, yes. So, like I was saying, um, it doesn't require a lot of tech expert to it doesn't require tech experts to fully understand everything they already knew how to receive calls they already knew how to send calls it was honestly more about class management than it was for them to understand the app now why do i think teachers should try it for those of you that haven't tried it or for those of you that have and it didn't work um, like I said, I keep emphasizing on this. It's something that most students are familiar with. Mm -hmm. That way that lowers their anxiety levels because let's be honest, everybody was anxious when we knew that we had to just jump into this. And a lot of us didn't have information about our students, how to contact them if it wasn't in our classroom that we had their information. So like I said, it's something that they're very familiar with. It's easy to use. Honestly, it's very easy. WhatsApp just guides you through it. Uh, video calls can be either one on one. It mm -hmm. can be small groups of four like I like I usually do when I have conversations and just checkups. I do three students and myself. So four or it could be a big group of eight. WhatsApp recently added this feature since this whole pandemic, they added up to eight people can be in a video call. Mm -hmm. And it's very important to know that if you have eight people in a video call, they have to all have the updated version. What's up in the settings lets you know if you need to update it or not. And if it does, then you have to update it to be able to go into the call with eight people. Now, small groups allows for better class management and focus. I feel that having a group of, let's say, eight students in a call, it's easier to let them all talk one by one or have small conversations with me or explain a class than having all 20 students in a Zoom call and I just feel that they're all waiting for their turn or they're just very anxious to, oh, when it's my turn to talk or they won't answer or they'll log in to the, the calls late. And also with WhatsApp, you can send links. I send them whenever I need to go to, to do their English lab. I'll send the link, they click it and it'll take them directly to the place. I've sent PDFs pictures and lesson videos but also you can send the videos from uh from youtube yes yes, yes. with mm -hmm. the with the links with the links yes mm -hmm. so when you send the link if it's youtube or if it's a link that you have to a what uh facebook video it doesn't matter as long as you send the correct link they click it and it'll send them to the videos or whatever you want them to go into I've sent Kahoot games. They click it and it'll take them to the Kahoot. I've sent YouTube videos. And also it allows you to send lesson videos. The max of a video is 11 minutes, which honestly for me, 11 minutes, it's enough to send a video explaining a mini lesson for them to just go on and do on themselves um, by themselves. Now, like I mentioned, we still have cons. The cons are, I mean, it depends. If you wanna see, like I see it, it's more pros than cons. But the cons that we have 
are that if you don't set ground rules at the beginning, the very first day, then students are just going to use it like regular social media. They'll, they'll send you shame texts. They'll send you videos about the vaccine for COVID. They'll send you memes. Um, you have to definitely set the ground rules. And I think that that has been the thing that has helped me the most. If you were listening to the video that I showed at the beginning, what I did was just reminding them our classes from 9 to 1130. If you send a, a text, I'm not going to answer. That was the second day that I was just reminding them. I had already said that the first day that we met through WhatsApp because it can get very overwhelming. Remember, you have that on your phone. You're, you can be eating, you can be spending time with your families, and then your class was ended at 1130, but you have students finish, um, sending you their homework at 9 p.m. and your phone is gonna be buzzing. And so that's something very important. The other cons that I've faced is that if students don't have the updated version, of that WhatsApp, you cannot do a video call with more than four people because I've tried this and only one out of the six students that I called, only one student didn't have the updated version and it wouldn't allow me to add him into the call. So mm -hmm. we only stayed five in the call and I couldn't add him into the call. Or if I have everybody is in the call and someone isn't updated and is in the call, it won't allow me to add anybody else. So if you do want to try it with eight people, you have to make sure that you have everything updated and that students know how to update their phone. All they have to do is go to settings and in settings, it will just tell them where and what do they have to do? And it's very simple, probably take them like for an update, like three minutes, depending on their Wi-Fi. Okay, and let's have any more questions. I'm gonna turn off my presenter right now. I just, I don't know if I have a question or I just want to make a couple comments. Um, I just, yes. thank you for this. Cause I've been seeing posts with corrections and I didn't know how to do it and like where it was. So I, I, I could have Googled it earlier, but I wasn't <laughs> dedicating the time to figuring out WhatsApp. So I now know how to edit pictures. And I also now know how to get them to not save on my phone because I have so yes. many dictations on my phone. <laughs> They're ridiculous, and now I'm going to go and get rid of all of them and not have any more. Uh, uh, that, that, that's the way that you can export all your information from your phone to your Google Classroom. Then you can erase mm -hmm. it, or either you can go to setting and then you erase everything else. Yeah, it's great. Exactly. Yep. Uh, I also I like the idea of the time slots because um, because I see your classes because I'm a lurker. I see that like <laughs> once they sign up, you repost it filled out so they know who's in their group so they're like accountable to each other also yeah. so you use that editing tool to write in their names and then it goes back to all of them so they can see oh i'm in a group with i'm in a group with edel fincio and uh oswaldo i better show up or they're gonna i'm gonna hear about it from them and like everybody sees where they're supposed to be i like that for accountability um and the, just as far as like the I'm, I'm just really boggled at how quick you were to set up ground rules. Like that first video was March 17th. I was yeah. like barely out of bed on March 17th. I just didn't have my head around any of this. Um, but I just want to say like you'd added the video chat later. So it is possible to set up new routines even after the class mm -hmm. started. Exactly. Like, it doesn't have to be all is lost because – you know, you didn't catch it at the beginning. I just want to mm -hmm. put that out there for the for the world to hear. Thank you, Bonnie. Yeah, no, definitely, um, Larry. I see your hand. Um, definitely remember this is something that most of us, if not all of us, were just doing as we went, just checking and seeing what worked and not. So I'm just happy that. It did work for me and my students, my three classes. Yes, Larry. 
You have a question? You're muted. I'm sorry, as with yeah. Bonnie, um, I don't really have questions, but I just wanna um, thank you for pointing out uh, the tool to be able to correct. Um, I primarily, I prefer my computer. I like to see the big screen, mm -hmm. but now I know, you know, like I don't need that to correct work. Um, the other thing I just wanted to reinforce to everyone else is that kind of privately correcting students' work. Mm -hmm. um, I really encourage them, I use a group. I encourage them to post their work in the group so everyone sees work, but I reply privately unless it's excellent. So if someone hands in something that's perfect or excellent, I say that in the group. If it needs some work, I reply privately. And I think that gives, you know, the students uh, uh, experiments that might be incorrect are not out there for the rest of the class to see. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's a great way to do it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Anybody else? I see that some people have been writing here in the chat. Uh... I just wanted to, so this is the duo. You can form uh, groups of eight. Or of individual. eight also? Okay. Yeah. Can, I mean, you just call instantly, it's, it's goes. It's, it's very easy for, for I men 75, uh, 65 years old who are not tech savvy, so it's, it's easier. You have it on your phone with the Galaxy, or also if you have a Chromebook, it's right there. Okay, yeah, so can, I would like I mean, if the teachers can try it, it would be very useful for the students. So thank you, Bubba. I'm definitely gonna check it out because I'm yep. using USA Learns thanks to you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> um, is it what did you say? Laura says? Can you explain how you use? Oh yes. So what I do is that I just send them. They have. And then this is hand up too after. Boop. Sorry, yeah, I don't see everybody, so I'm sorry if I don't see you. Just write and I'll go to you. Um, Lara asks, Can you explain how you use USA Learns with WhatsApp? Okay, so what I do is honestly, they already that first video that I sent was the second video of the second day of class. In the first video, of the first day of class, I just explain to them how to do the login and how to create their account. The second video was just how to access to the class. And the only thing that I do is just send them the link, remind them, okay, so today I greet them. Good morning, blah, 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 blah. Today we're going to be using USA Learns. I want you to do at least an hour or an hour and a half or two hours if I'm not going to go back to them in the day. And they just access um, USA Learns through the link that I send them. That's all. All you have to do is send the link and they'll click on it and go into whatever platform you send. You use WhatsApp with higher level English speakers. Yes, I would. Yeah. Why not? Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, like I said, I have a level two and a very like mixed class with the seven stars um, content class, but I would. I would. It's not about if their their English is high or not. It's more about the tech part of it. If I had a classroom just of, I don't know, teenagers, I'll probably do more tech savvy stuff. But that's not the case. And like I mentioned before, I have a big gap. And then in order to be in contact with members. Okay. Their phone numbers need to be. I Wait, David, you had a question. What's well, your yeah, question? Just, it wasn't really a question. I just wanted to say that my mind is blown. So thank you, Exica. It's really cool. <laughs> you're, you're, you're using the technology in much more sophisticated ways than I uh, just intuitively was fumbling around. So it's like before I had a loft, you know, just like one room, and you've made me see like a lot of different apartments. So thank you. Awesome. Great, great stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so I see Lillian says, I understand that in order to be in contact with members via WhatsApp, their phone numbers need to be shared and will appear in the chat and chat info. What happens when a student is hesitant or reluctant to share their phone number? It's a very good question.
question. Okay, so yes, you do need the phone number of the students. And the thing with WhatsApp is that they don't necessarily have to have their phone number that they have in my case in Rhode Island. So I have WhatsApp with my phone number from Puerto Rico. I have students that have their WhatsApp with their phone number from Dominican Republic. And they can still use it because like I said, it's connected directly. They could use Google Voice. I don't understand what you said the other David, David Prolux. I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing that last name wrong. Um, voice is just a phone number you can get through Google. Like Google oh. Voice, you can get a phone number. Okay, yeah. Then yes, then awesome. Then you can just add that. But they don't necessarily have to have their current phone number. It can be a former phone number that they had. And they can use it. And it does appear in the chat if you don't have it named. So let's say um, if I have Bonnie's phone number and I don't have her saved as a contact, it'll just appear her phone number and not her name. So good question. And thank you for sharing that about the Google Voice. Any other questions or comments? I don't see everybody here. So if you have a question, you've been raising your hand. I'm sorry, I can't see you. Can I share something, Jessica? Yes, of course, Laura. Um, it happened to me once that I, I was calling all of my students to check on them and giving them announcements like individually because I decided so. And it happened to me that um, that's exactly what, what, what they did. Two of my students were using uh, their phone numbers from their home country. Mm -hmm. And without realizing, I called them. <laughs> <laughs> Right, <laughs> because uh, I just used the phone number that you know showed there in the WhatsApp, um, mm -hmm. you know, in the contacts contacts from WhatsApp. So then I realized that um, I made two international calls. <laughs> so oh wow! That's yeah, that is um, mm -hmm. very important to check before, like if you're gonna call them, you know, make sure if you're gonna call them through WhatsApp, then is uh, you're just using what um, the Wi-Fi. But I was calling them, you know, regular through regular phone with their WhatsApp information. Yeah, no, that's that's good that you mentioned that because yeah, like I so said, the others, mm -hmm. others don't make the same mistake. <laughs> oh, Laura, that that's all. That's all. Thank you. Okay, thank you for sharing. Um, so yeah, so definitely not always the phone that they have and appear in their WhatsApp. It's going to be their personal phone. It could be a former phone number. Or it could be a Google Voice number. Any other questions or comments? OK, I have a question for you. Do you think that this webinar has opened your mind about using WhatsApp as a class? just to use it in your classroom? Do you think that you're looking at WhatsApp as a different way to use it, not just texting and memes and Shane texts about COVID? Yay, okay, awesome. So in the chat box, just write a yes or a no or a maybe, okay. Yeah, for me, it was easier to use. I bet on, 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 on WhatsApp right away, right at the beginning. Okay. Awesome. It was a nice way to start because people were like a lot of our students were already there. So it was a yeah. nice way to meet them somewhere they were comfortable. Exactly. And some teachers moved out into other platforms. And yes, mm -hmm. one teacher who just like amplified what she was doing in that one platform and really made it dynamic. Um, is there anybody that would want to speak to the question that Joan asked about using it with higher level English language learners? Which one, USA Learns? No, the, um, oh, I thought she was asking about WhatsApp, not USA Learns. Oh, okay. Bonnie, I can just um, invite everybody for the next uh, webinar, which is going to be this Thursday. I'll, I'll be talking about that a little bit. Talking about what? About your question. <laughs> if, we are, if you can use uh, WhatsApp with a higher level, I have ESO level four students. Yeah, I think you can use it. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I am using it, and I can give you more information on that on Thursday. 
So please awesome. register. Awesome. Free advertisement for Laura's webinar. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. So Thomas Larrabee, are you go are you I forgot your real name and I see Thomas Larrabee up on the street screen. Are you gonna do a teacher webinar about um all the things you mentioned today? Because I think you could fill forty five minutes uh -huh. of information for us. I'm just planting that seed because <laughs> I would join it. <laughs> Booba, she's yes. talking to you. Oh Booba, okay. Yes, Booba car. Booba car. Yeah. yeah. What is your question? No, I just said you had some interesting things to talk about today. I would, I'd be interested in hearing more either in a group or um, privately because you had a lot of stuff to share. Yeah, if you, I mean, if you like, you like, you can do it privately, no problem. So, do you have my phone number? No. <laughs> okay. What, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna uh, take your phone number. I'm gonna invite you to Duo Google.com so that we can have a live chat. Okay. I'm not going to give you my phone number on this large call. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can give you my number, no problem. So, so, yeah. so I'll just inter I'll just interject if you could hear me. Um, you know, always looking for additional ideas of what teachers are doing that we mm -hmm. can share with other teachers. So, um, yeah, an email address in there in the chat box is probably a reasonable request. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know, happy, you know, happy to uh, explore more things. I know Laura sort of brought up a little bit that she's going to be presenting on Thursday and she is. And, and again, I'm sure it's going to be different. So each of these sessions are different because I think each teacher is unique and they're all presenting a different perspective and it's been fabulous to watch them all. So, um, yeah, we're getting close to wrapping up. Um, mm -hmm. And I loved your question, by the way, about will people try to use this? I'm kind of curious too. Um, what is, what, did you hear something today that was like that one thing that became that aha moment for you um, that you're suddenly going, oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> if you, if so, can you just put that in the chat? Cause it's always interesting to know what that, that one thing is. Mm -hmm. Also here, I'm just uh, editing the, the pics. Oh yeah, not a lot of people knew that, so I'm glad that. Correcting student work. What else? Anything else in particular? Ability to correct student work, editing pics. Yeah, I think a lot of <laughs> teachers were mind blown with editing the pics without having to save them <laughs> on their phone. <bone>. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. And, you know, yeah. and David's comment about the structured approach, I know that when we first talked, that was one of my immediate takeaways was that you immediately applied structure around these are the rules. This is how we're going to. And I think that's just so important. Um, the annotation. Yeah, that's how, that Jane mentions. Ground rules, pictures. Yep. Yep. Brought out lots of lots of good points today. Thank you. Pre <laughs> And I just want to say too, you know, really appreciate that you were willing to come forward to do this presentation today. It's, it's been really interesting. It's been really interesting. Oh. So thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you for the opportunity and all of you for joining. Thanks, Jessica. Thank and we you. always appreciate good questions during the call, mm -hmm. by the way. Um, I think it, you know, it makes the difference between that passive listening and feeling like you can actually get involved. So um, always a good thing. Um, you will all, by the way, receive a link to an evaluation, but I'm actually going to just paste it here. I know Keisha pasted it earlier, but I'm just going to paste it in again. So if you're inclined to just do the quick eval now, it's there. Um, so I just sent my email, my personal email, in case anybody has questions or wants to reach out because they haven't they didn't understand this very well and they're trying to do it or whatever, just feel free. Okay. Thank you, Lily. Thank you everybody for this. Thank you, Jessica. Was awesome. <laughs> Booba, it was so nice seeing you. <laughs> Likewise. <laughs> I just posted a uh, link to how to edit photos and videos because I was like trying to play with it. So I just Googled it. <laughs> Um, so that, I was like, I need to know how to do this exactly. <laughs> like differentiation, because just listening to you wasn't enough. But I thought it was great. Okay. I also think that, you know, the whole um, 
setting ground rules and the memes and the chain text and all that stuff that comes into them. I think there's like a balance too. Like some people are more comfortable with having some of that stuff in their classroom, but it's that, that, you know, these are my lines. This is how my classroom is going to go is important to set that up. And also important to remember that you can do that at any time, you know, like you don't have to stay uh, with something just because you signed up for it. So well, I guess this is my life forever. You can always, you know, change course and like say, well, that didn't work. I don't like the way that's going. Let's change it. So, yeah, I, like I mentioned, I said in the chat earlier, and I, I really think it's true that, you know, you started with something that allowed students to build some self-confidence around mm. using a piece of technology that they kind of knew into ways, new ways of using it. And I think, you know, that's how you build skills. So is by building yeah. more self-confidence. So I think that's great. Definitely. So, well, we can wrap up unless there are more questions. And again, thanks everyone. I'll Thank stay you. on till until the end. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. I hope it worked and it opened your mind in different ways. That's right. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>